outrage, even in a post-grand final world. There's still plenty of it. We're going to decide if it's real or ridiculous. I'm Chris Danks. You, my friend, Liam O'Loughlin. We are the Fair Dinkin Department. We're talking footy. Grand final. Let's get it out of the way. 26-24, in my opinion, best grand final I've ever seen. Okay, better than 2015. Better than, I saw 2015 Cowboys. live. I think this is better. Okay, interesting. I'd probably still have... 2015 just slightly ahead just because of kind of the fairy tale nature of the Cowboys getting up but this was an incredible game wasn't yeah. it um, obviously I'm sure we'll get into the Nathan Cleary stuff but Ezra Mam's hat trick the Mitch Kenny getting off the nudie run in a grand final Tom Flegler barging over it it had everything looked like it was a great atmosphere at Acor Stadium as well um, but the Panthers proved a little bit too strong and if I may give a little hat tip to the referees well refereed game I think mm, I think we'll get into that later as well Ooh. it was a well officiated game though big ups to, to Adam G uh, so 26-24 what was your 3-2-1 and one? are you going with Nathan Cleary as a 3 Nathan Cleary is a, a definite 3 um, mm. I'll give my 2 points to Ezra Mam because mm. 26-24, they lost by two points, and he couldn't have done much more to, to get him over the line. And I'm going to give my one point to Moses Leota. Ooh, tough one. Yeah, I thought he was I thought he was exceptional. Yeah. Uh, but there are uh, quite a few guys from the Broncos I thought had good games as well. Obviously, Payne Haas and Paddy Carrigan, um, exceptional. Keenan Palisier off the bench had yep. a pretty good output um, in his time on the field. But Last game for the Bronx? Yeah, he's off to yep. the Titans next year. So, yeah, it's just a, a great game footy. You any different for your, your three, two, one? Uh, just for the one, I'd Stephen Crichton. Yeah, okay, that's for, uh, for yeah. the last fifteen minutes. He was he was pretty amazing. Yeah. Last um, grand final, he'll probably ever play in as well. So <laughs> well done, Stephen. Um, <laughs> good luck next year at the way, Dogs, mate. Way to go out on a high. Uh, Clive Churchill Medal winner Nathan Cleary uh, joins Billy Slater and Bradley Clyde as the only two. That's right. I believe so yeah, yeah. Who have two? Um, I didn't think it was that surprising. I just don't see who else you could have gone with. Yeah, in, in a game like that, you, you've got to go with. The, the winning team and without Nathan Cleary they certainly don't win that game yeah. um, he had the biggest impact on the result at the end of the day and you know for me that's that's who the man of the match should be awarded to um, obviously if, if Brisbane did manage to get up you would have to have gone with with Ezra Mam um, for, for his hat trick and the way that he tore Penrith apart but you couldn't give it to him in a losing team when Cleary did what he did in that last you know 18 or 19 minutes whatever it was yeah. um, that was the, the stuff of legend really uh, we'll get to it in full in a bit, but just quickly, um, Adam Reynolds, disappoint or was just bested by a better man on the day? I thought he was pretty disappointing, to yeah. be honest. Um, I know he did pick up an injury in the first half, um, but I just thought some of his decision-making, for a guy that's as experienced as he is, played in as many big games as he has, played in two grand finals previously, um, he had an, an outstanding season for the Broncos as well, and a really good final series. Um, I just thought some of his game management both early on and certainly late in the game left a little bit to be desired for mine but um, I'm sure he'll be back bigger than bigger and better next year for, for the Bronx in what is a contract year for him 100% uh, but first Penrith the three peak first team to do it in a NRL era first since Eels in the 80s mm. so an entirely different time they didn't even have the salary cap then no so wild wild times uh, only two teams in NRL era have gone back to back um, Roosters and then... And Panthers now. Panthers yeah, now. So. That threw me with the notes here. I was like, crap, what was the other one? <laughs> <laughs> um, what I, I think is probably most impressive is the players they've lost. Mm. If you'll indulge me for a second, we'll just go through some of the bigger ones. Uh, Crichton this year, Coruscant, Kickow, Burton, Capewell, Spencer, Le Spencer Lee knew this year. Mm. That's like, they're all guns. And then there was more. Yeah, it, they, they've oh, over... It's kind of been staggered, which mm. I guess in a way has been been helpful and they've been able to keep it a core group um, there and then when they do lose a, a back row like a Viliami kick out they've got someone like Scott Sorensen who's already in the system and, and already a proven first grader to just slot straight in there and, and do a remarkable job Isaac Tungo in his debut year last year filled in for, wild, for Matt it? Burton and yeah. he was he was amazing and he's now one of the best centers in the competition after you know 18 months in the top grade so they, they do have a system in place where they're able to replace guys internally and if they feel that they need to fill a hole by going to the market and picking someone up like they did with a Luke Garner or a Jack Cogger um, Zach Hosking played a lot of first grade this year for mm. Penrith they you know pick for, from, from other clubs but they don't go outside market players um, to, to fill the void they promote from within which probably makes it even more impressive um, compared to maybe the Roosters who do kind of splash the cash on 
on big name players. Don't they just? Chuck it my way. <laughs> uh, so onto the real or ridiculous part. Jerome Luai claim they're the greatest team ever. A lot of people are agreeing. Mm. Uh, Penrith, the greatest team of all time. Real or ridiculous? I'm going to divide it up into to two, I guess, separate ways to look at it. Are they? Is this team that won the premiership this year the greatest team? NRL team in the what if it was just the greatest dynasty are the greatest but I yeah so I, I I would say they're not this single team and not the greatest yeah. team ever but in terms of a, a stretch where they have been able to keep the majority of their squad together over a three to four year period then it absolutely real that they, they are the best team certainly of the modern era certainly of any team that I've seen what they've been able to do under Ivan Cleary is yeah it's it's been incredible um, to, to watch unfold over the past you know, four years and being in the weeds week to week, working and covering Penrith and what they've been able to do. Um, it, it's awesome to see for, for a club that, you know, for a while did struggle a little bit and yeah. they had a you know five-year plan in place that probably turned into more of a 10-year plan. That's been well documented. But, um, you know, the, the, the things that Phil Gould put in place 10, 12 years ago are now, you know, setting them up for long-term success. Um, so I think they are absolutely the... Um, the greatest dynasty and the greatest team of, of this modern era and for me I, I can't see how you can't call them the greatest team of all time because what they've done in a, a salary cap era where we mentioned they've lost so many players it's very different to you know Parramatta in the 80s or the Dogs in the 80s or my mob back in the in the 50s and 60s it's a very different game now it's a lot more challenging to um, to keep a squad together mm. and, and to win two titles in a row to win one title is impressive enough but to win two titles and now three titles in a row um yeah, I can't go past Penrith. What about yourself? The only other team I thought would have come close would have been uh, the Bronx of the 90s, mm. just for an extended time. So for the 90s, their, their win percentage, 71.3. Panthers, way fast that, yeah. 83%. Yeah. That's why they get such a good run with all the refs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the dumbest statistic I've ever heard oh, in my awful, life. It's awful, isn't it? Uh, so I mean, Brisbane won five premierships every grand final they featured in. I think it was like 98 where they pretty much had the test side. Mm. The reason I would go with the Panthers apart from the win percentage is that they've kept replacing players, but also not everyone on their team is a test player. Like their tier two players are guns or mm. is still, but not everyone's in the Australia side, no. which we'll speak about. No, they've only got three players in the, the Australian squad and you know you could probably argue they could have a couple more, but they've got obviously a lot of guys playing for Samoa and New Zealand mm. as well. Um, you know, guys that are in the origin scene that are opting to, to play um, for Samoa, which is, it's awesome to see. You look at Jerome Luai and Stephen Crichton and Brian Toto, what they've done for their country and, and rise the, the status of Samoa in a, in a test setting. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's great to see, um, but hopefully someone else <laughs> can, can lift the trophy next season because I think a lot of people are probably sick of seeing, uh, really? sick of seeing Penrith. Yeah, nah, I, win five, win six. Yeah, yeah I don't know. It, it gets to a, a stage. We haven't really had it in rugby league. It gets to that, that New England Patriots NFL yeah. kind of stage um, where you know, everyone wants to see them lose and people will pay to see them lose and everyone else is chasing them, which makes for great theatre when someone eventually does. Um, and, and speaking of the Patriots, I think oh. I said this to a few people. The only way that I could describe what Nathan Cleary did in that grand final was like watching Tom Brady in the 2017 Super Bowl where they the were Falcons? down 28 to three against yeah. uh, the Falcons and he surged them home. That's the only way that I could kind of compare what Nathan Cleary did. And, and speaking of Nathan Cleary, his second Clive Churchill medal, yes. steering them back from 16 points down, they were gone. Did you think they were dead and buried? 100%. Yeah. Ezra Mann was, was killing it. Uh, the Panthers looked tired as well. Mm. Um, Leota was off the field. And I think, although the Panthers have you know a great bench, mm. I think they really felt that. Yeah, they, they just looked tired. I thought Renault was just going to ice the game, kick them to death. Mm. Um, I, yeah, I thought that was it. So Nathan Cleary has now won three premierships, three mm. origin series, two Clive Churchills at the age of 25. Mm. He turns 26 next month. But um, that's... Pretty incredible stat line for a guy that's possibly nowhere near his, his peak. I know a lot of people feel that or, or believe that, you know, playmakers come into their best football in their maybe late 20s, early yep. 30s. So if that's true for Nathan Cleary, it's it's frightening to think what he's going to achieve in his career. Um, so I guess the question, if we're talking real or ridiculous, is Nathan Cleary on track to become an immortal or is he already there in your opinion? Uh, 800% on track. Mm. 800%. Mm. If you look at where uh, Joe was at in his career, he's probably ahead of him. 
Um, I thought ever since from when he had the uh, the third tackle 40-20, which is the ballsiest thing. Like if that went wrong, <laughs> balls of steel. Eh? It's he would insane. have been hammered <laughs> nonstop. And Ace to completely ice the game. Without him, Penrith do not win that game. I think someone said yesterday of note that um, the Broncos would have won every single grand final. Like, not just on scoring 24 points, mm. but without... Like, play, if they were playing anyone but the Panthers, they win that grand final. Oh, 100%. Hands down. Because they were really good. Uh, but mm. Penrith did what? Uh, what, was their, what was their tackle percent? Their completion? I think they, I think they made a one they, or two It was like 36 to 37 night. or 37 yeah. to 38, whatever. It's insane. On clear, yeah, amazing. And 25, he's in a stable place. Mm. Some of the some of the guys who are around him are still super young. Edwards, 27. Luai, if he stays, 26. Yo's, 28. Like, that, Fisher that, Harrison and Leoda have still got, you know, Fisher Harrison only 27. They've still got plenty of good football ahead of him. I thought, um, I think they'll they'll win at least two more titles. Yeah. Which is madness. I'm not saying they'll go, they'll win five straight. Yeah. But I think they'll win two but more. But yeah, during this period where they've got and that I'd, core group there, like Brian Toto and... Yeah. Um, Isaac Tungo are going to be there long term, you would think as well. Um, so they're, they're set up for, for success long term, and that means Nathan Cleary is still going to be there or thereabouts every year in competing for titles. Yeah, and it doesn't matter. It's like I'm sure we brought up about his origin record, which isn't as great as some others, but mm. I just I think it's such a non issue. Yeah, I, I, that is the, the knock, yep. quote unquote, on, on Cleary. I, I don't 100% agree with it. Um, I do think that he has had some really good performances for New South Wales and mm. he's won three series at the age of 25 which a lot of players in their career especially for New South Wales if you look in the past 20 years no one's done no that one, no. um, so I think he's absolutely on track to become an immortal and for me who's you know the same age as, as Nathan um, so I've been watching the game for you know the same amount of time that he probably has he's you know, probably top three or four players that I've seen, um, absolutely. And his record is only going to improve with the Penrith side that's around him and the New South Wales side that's going to be around him as well for, you know, the next five or ten years. Were you reassessing where you're at in your life? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely, every day. Especially when you, you then you look at, like, Reese Walsh and Ezra Mann. Like Payne Haas is yeah. 23. I'm like, geez, I'm getting on. Oh, boy. All right, well, on to the other side. Adam Reynolds, off night. Mm. I don't think he's been hammered that much in the past few days. No. I, which, it's rugby league. Someone's always got to be the villain of sorts. But I think everyone, there's been a, at least a little bit of logic applied to it and that had a great season, steered his side to the grand final. If Nathan Cleary didn't go wild in the past 20 minutes, you probably could forgive him having a, a bit of an off night. Mm. Um, but he, he had an off night. And it was just probably exacerbated by being opposite one of the greatest performances in NRL grand final history. It was. I, I think if the, if the tables were turned and Nathan Cleary put in a performance like Adam Reynolds did the other night, he would have got hammered from pillar to post. Yeah. Um, I guess it's because that you know there's a knock on him. He's still a bit young. He's at Penrith. There's the perceived arrogance. There's all of these things that people want to chip on on Nathan for you know when he might have a, an eight out of ten game instead of a ten out of ten. Um, and Adam Reynolds the other night was below his best. Um, the short dropout which led to Mitch Kenny's first try. That made no sense to me. It was nil all. There was n- it, was, it was not necessary at all. He did another one later in the game when they were still up by four points mm. late in the piece. He's gone a, a pretty low percentage play. I know a lot of the time it does come off for him, but at that stage of the game, a guy of his experience, he's, he's tried to boot the ball essentially out and try and re-get it, uh, regather it for from a dropout. Nathan Cleary... You know, kind of one upped him and, and got his foot just over the line, caught it on the full, um, which saw you know Penrith get the ball back and eventually they were able to topple Brisbane's defence, who for the most part were were pretty strong. Um, but yeah, some of the decision making from Adam Reynolds just wasn't where it needed to be. I think one stage they were still up as well late in the game. I think we were talking about it before we started recording. He got caught on last tackle, yeah. twenty metres out from Penrith's line. That never happens. Adam Reynolds never does that. He you know he knows where to get the ball. He got himself in the position and he just caught with, got caught with the ball on the last tackle. Like, so I don't I don't know whether the injury that he picked up kind of hampered him at all or what what happened. Whether there were some mental demons from the twenty twenty one grand final as well. Um, that's pretty heartbreaking for him to lose two GFs in the space of three years in yeah. very similar fashion. So, look, I I don't think it was a great performance from him. He wasn't the only one. Don't get me wrong. Um, there were some other guys from Brisbane that didn't have their best night. Reese Walsh, I thought, had some really nice touches, but he was 
well contained by Penrith, which yep. we probably expected to happen, um, just given how good a defensive outfit the Panthers are. Um, but yeah, for mine, I think Reynolds was the, the glaring one that was quite disappointing for Brisbane. So Reynolds off contract next year. Mm, there's already a bit of talk about this, isn't there? So when I saw in a few of the headlines, like Gordon Tallis, I think it was like slams or disgust, yeah. whatever adjective. Um, and at Reynolds, I was like, oh, here we go. But he actually made a pretty good point, I thought. Whereas at Brisbane have time. They don't have to make the call right now. No. If they want to give him till the, the halfway through the season or whatever, you can do that still. Mm. And then make it a, a call if he's going to be your halfback for 2025. Yeah. Obviously, it's, it's not all about Renault as well. You've got Ezra Mann, who's off contract next year. Uh, then you've got, you've got Walsh, you've got Cobbo, you've got, I'm missing someone, Stags, Stags. who's off contract in 2025. Money's mm. going to be tight. Yeah. And I think that the priorities now for Brisbane are locking in Reese Walsh and Ezra Mann, obviously. Be. Um, but it's it's making sure that their their salary cap is balanced. And Adam Reynolds isn't going to play for peanuts. Mm. He's a guy that's been around for a long time. And he's an experienced Premiership winning halfback. He's not going to play, you know, until he's thirty five for next to no money. Um, so how they're going to balance their salary cap will be very interesting. Obviously, they've just upgraded Payne Haas to a pretty sizable contract. They've lost Herbie Farnworth and Tom Flegler, but. Um, it'll be interesting to see how the Adam Reynolds situation plays out. I guess real or ridiculous, as it stands right now after the 2023 season, how it unfolded and how the grand final unfolded. Do you think he deserves a contract extension now or do you think Brisbane should be waiting a little bit? I think if they can wait, they should. Mm. But I still think pre- Brisbane are like hard in their premiership window yeah. right now. Yeah. Everyone's only going to get more expensive. They need him to steer them around. Yeah, th- And also, he's not that... He's not, that old old man Rivers Reynolds. Yeah. He's thirty three, same age as SJ. Yeah. Cronk won three premierships mm. after turning thirty three. Yeah, there is also the I guess the concern about his body. If, yeah, if his he body has a few up. little niggles popping up here and there. Um, so which was you know maybe part of the reason mm. why South opted not to retain him on a long term deal. But I suppose making a grand final is better than missing the finals. So I'm told. <laughs> what about um, you? I'm going to say, in terms of getting a contract right now, yeah. I think ridiculous. Yeah. Um, he was brought there to win him a premiership, and you know he, he, he did fall short in a big game. Um, so I would probably wait and see how things go, but I would be pushing him down the priority list a little bit for now. Off the top of your head, who would they even replace him with? Who's I know they've the got Jock Madden there waiting in the wings who's played... He's off contract in 24, I think. Yeah, but he's played some good footy when he's come in. He's a guy that... You know, they're hoping might be a long-term, yeah. you know, seven to take over from Adam Reynolds. You know, he could move Ezra Mann to seven. I don't think he's probably a natural seven, but um, he could potentially move there and they could look for a six. Um, Brisbane have, have got a pretty large catchment area and, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if they did have, you know, an 18, 19-year-old coming through that we perhaps don't know about. Um, I know they do have a really talented young guy at nine in Blake Moser that yep. got his debut in the last round against Melbourne um, and he's probably going to be... Their long-term guy at dummy half, but as for their seven, I'm not entirely sure. Um, which, But I, I would still be waiting um, and just seeing how things play out the first half of next year with Adam Reynolds. If they're still in a really good position and his body's holding up, they're in the top four, they look like they're in contention for another premiership, they've they've locked away Reese Walsh and Ezra Mann, then yeah, I, I would probably consider it. But um, there's a lot of factors that have, have got to play out first before I'm re-signing Adam Reynolds. Yep, that's fair. Referees. Referees. We love referees. It took us till the fourth topic. Let's hammer him. Or let's not. Let's not. Adam G. He was good. He was damn good. He was good. And you know you know when a referee's had a good performance? Don't even talk about it. You don't notice them. Um, and the only reason that people are talking about him now is because there was only one ruck infringement the entire night. There were five penalties. Um, it was a very fast, free-flowing game. Wasn't a lot of stoppages. The whistle was kept in the pocket. Yeah. There were a few melees that he handled really well, I thought. Um while speaking to either the, the individual players or the captains. Um, but I felt like maybe it was officiated different to 27 rounds and three weeks of finals. Yeah, it was an origin performance, mm. um, as Gus would call it. Yeah. But it was, it was, it was, it was, it was definitely officiated differently. I think the only missed one, which typically you'd think would be called up, was probably the Liam Martin high shot. Yeah. And that's nitpicking. And I had to go back and look for it. Mm. But didn't, at the time, I didn't think, oh, that's a howler. Yeah, but there's there's been players that have been suspended for that this year. Yeah, definitely. And so. I thought, personally, the way that it's been adjudicated this year, I thought 
the, the tackle on Adam Reynolds that led to him getting injured. I thought that was the way that it's been the called. Drop, I yeah. thought it was a hip drop. I think it was Scott Sorensen. He left his feet. He kind of swung his body weight around. If Adam Reynolds goes off and, you know, Scott Sorensen goes unpunished and then you look throughout the season, the example that pops into my head is Jack DeBellin was yep. penalised a couple of times for pretty similar tackles and copped a four-week suspension and a sin bin. Like, I know it's a grand final and we don't want a sin bin blokes if we don't have to. We don't want to penalise blokes if we don't have to. But you you talk about player safety. Player safety doesn't go away for 80 minutes when it's the first Sunday of October. It's still there. Adam Reynolds could have suffered a, a serious injury. Luckily, he didn't. But that was a, a pretty clear hip drop in the way that it has been officiated the entire year. So, yeah, there's some some double standards. But I Ooh. guess it, it is good to see the whistle go away in a big game. Well, now this has me slightly confused now. I thought I knew what you were going to say. Real or ridiculous, the NRL should allow refs to change things for grand finals slash origin. Well, no, ridiculous. Of course it's ridiculous. It's going to happen. It's always going to happen, but it's ridiculous. Because what if you, in week one of the finals, get knocked out from a decision that's refereed completely different three weeks later in a grand final? Yeah. You miss out on a spot in the top eight because a referee called a hip drop and then doesn't call it in a grand final. I know we're never going to get complete consistency, but that's what the bunker is also there for. I thought that was a reportable offence, the, the Scott Sorensen tackle. So, no, I think it's ridiculous, but it's rugby league. It's always going to happen for Origins and and grand finals and we just got to live with it but doesn't mean you have to like it i like it i like it a lot okay <laughs> real real i get it i get it doesn't make any sense but it's it's the the pinnacle and i think it should be given a little bit more leeway yeah but i mean big ups to, to adam g um he let the game be the story of the night um and that's what everyone's been talking about and the only reason that it hasn't is because there were a lot of things or not a lot but a few things let go and I guess the the ruck was a lot, a lot faster and uh, a lot less, you know, six agains and yeah. that annoying bell going off <laughs> as per usual. But um, yeah, look, it it was the the football that was the main story on on Sunday night, and I guess that's all you can ask for. <laughs> he says through gritted teeth. <laughs> Finally, we're on the home stretch. Uh, the Australia squad. So Melbourne Ingers unveiled his 21, 21 man squad for the Pacific Championships. Are you excited for the Pacific Championships? Uh, yeah, I am. I, I don't mind some international football. I know the Cricket World Cup's starting, but I don't have a hell of a lot of excitement for that. Yeah. Um, I'm not a supercars guy, so Bathurst 1000 doesn't excite me. Horse racing is always good at this time of year, but rugby league is, is where my heart is, so I'm looking forward to it. Yourself? Massively. Mm. I love watching the Island Nations go out. I think it's fantastic. Um, which also, when we had Chorus out on Ebbs and Flows, like, two weeks ago, three weeks yeah. ago, when he was talking about Fiji doing the hymns. Mm. Mad. Yeah, I love it. And it's it's just like makes you want to run through walls. That's how he gets all the guys to buy in. It's like, hell yeah. Mm. Um, so yeah, 21-man squad, four debutants, Flagler, Stags, Hammer, Cobo. Surprised by any of them? Uh, Stags, I was a little bit surprised, but when you think about the centres, that missing. they're either playing for other countries or they're out injured or taking themselves out of contention for, for whatever reason... I guess he was maybe the, not the last man standing, but yeah, he was probably the the logical option. He's played Origin, he just played in the grand final, so he's fresh. But other than that, no major surprises um, out of the debutants. There were some other ones which left me scratching my head, though. Just one regular edge forward, mm. Liam Martin. So yeah, Liam Martin was obviously a walk up start. He was yeah. pretty good in the World Cup last year. He played all three games for Origin. Was probably one of New South Wales' better players. Just won his third straight grand final. Um, he was a pretty logical choice, but I thought a logical choice would be David Fafita. Mm. Um, I know he played for Tonga last year, but he's previously captained, I believe, the Junior Kangaroos. He's played for Australia in the Nines World Cup when they had that one-off tournament. He carved up in the NRL this year and he got his way back into the Queensland team. He just got Dalliam's second row of the year. So unless I'm missing something, I don't know how David Fafita wasn't picked. I've Search far and wide to see if he's injured. He didn't look injured, that's yeah. for sure. At the had that calf injury like halfway through the year. Yeah, but he, from all reports, he's he's fully fit. And he just hasn't been selected, so I don't know if he's pledged his allegiance to Tonga. But from what I can tell, he was he was in the mix for for Australia. And Mal Meninga said twelve months ago that he was in the mix for the World Cup. He didn't end up getting in. That's why he did go and play for Tonga. Um, but I don't. I just don't understand how he has possibly missed out. Now there's no other edge forwards. I know Cam Murray plays there. Um, quite a bit for New South Wales, but other than that, yeah. 
I don't know who they're going to be playing on the edge with Liam Martin for um, the, the couple of games or the, the finals if they, they get through. But that's one that certainly left me scratching my head. It's weird because Mal in the, the press conference, right? Mm. Uh, yesterday when he announced the side, he had James Tedesco next to him. Side note, Tedesco was always going to be selected. They won a yeah. World Cup last year. Yeah. He's the incumbent captain. It's like a, what, seven-day run-up to the World Cup. I'm super fine with that. Yeah. But Mal had said, listen, the reason why Teddy got selected and a few other people did is because we're choosing specialists. Yeah. But then he got one edge. But then he also said, oh, Carrigan will play like a little bit of edge. Yeah. I think he's played like two or three. Yeah, he played like two or three level. games there. I know he did like Broncos. a little bit yeah. in Origin when they had like everyone out. Yeah, that was, the same that was as, out of a necessity. Yeah, he did and the it, same yeah. as Ruben Cotter, who's never played edge. No. And I just don't see Cotter. You're not an out and out edge forwards. What I find probably the weirdest is that now you also got two rookie, at least at test level, centers mm. who are going to be like right next to your edge who are props. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, yeah, the balance of the what squad feels a little bit off. What I'm telling you is, I think I know more than Melman Yeah, I think this, the balance of the squad feels yeah. a little bit off. Um, but they've they've got a, a plenty of good players to choose from, and it does make it difficult when you've got Pat Carrigan, Isaiah Yo, and Cam Murray, who are all. Well, I mean, Isaiah Yo's an 80 minute player. Cam Murray can certainly play 80 minutes at lock, and and Paddy Carrigan's you know a 65 to 70 minute player, and yep. can probably play 80 at a pinch if need be. They're all out and out number 13s and for mine Cam Murray is the, be- the best of the bunch um, and that's where I'd be playing him but yep. because of the balance of the squad he's not going to be playing on the edge he's not going to be playing in the middle he's going to be playing on the edge because they haven't picked David Fafida or anyone else that possibly could have found their way into the squad um, the other ones I guess were when you look at James Tedesco he was probably always going to be there yep. but it, it is a little bit strange when for the second year in a row the Dalian medal winner doesn't make the squad in Caelan Ponga. I thought him or Reese Walsh or maybe both could have been there. Um, especially Ponga because he he's played 14 for for Queensland before and he could probably do the job. And he's he could just, be another lock. Yeah, and he's just <laughs> he's just got the award for the best player in the competition. And Reese Walsh, I mean, if you're looking on form, was far superior to James Tedesco in the State of Origin arena, which you know back in the day used to be a a trial for Australian selection. Well, if you're going based off origin performances, then Reese Walsh is miles ahead of James Tedesco. Yep. And he was for the entire NRL season as well. So, I don't know. I, I don't know what message we're sending. Um, I think we're sending that uh, the message that maybe reputation matters a little bit better than current form or your current output. For what it's worth, I didn't mind Mal's explanation that short run up, we need guys who've, who've with combinations. So I, I think Yo will be the 13. You'd have to be the 13. Yeah. Um, and then you guys who've, who've all played together previously. Yeah. It is, a, it is a bit weird about the last two Dalian medalists not playing. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, I thought Nico probably could have. The only thing with the Ponga, though, last year. all right, but you're going to have. You've got Ben Hunt already in the side. Yeah. Yeah, I, you can't pick everyone, I know. Yeah. But it, I don't know what, what message it is sending. Um, another one. I know I'll harp on him a little bit. I don't know how Jake Chaboyevic is in the squad. Yeah, Manly didn't make the finals. He had injuries throughout the year. I don't think he was in exceptional form by any means. And when you've already got you know, a shitload of middle forwards and you're leaving a guy like David Fafita out or another edge forward they could have selected, I don't understand why he's there because I don't know what role he's going to be there to play. When you've got some of the elite front rowers in the competition and guys that are you know, probably going to offer a little bit more and then you've got... Th- the three best lock forwards in the competition as well. I don't, I don't know why Jake Chaboyevich is there outside of he's a good bloke and he's been there before. Good clubhouse selection. Yeah. Real or ridiculous, the Kangaroos are selecting on reputation alone. Absolutely. Based on form, James Tedesco doesn't deserve to be playing for Australia. Yeah. Because he was pretty ordinary, especially the first two games in Origin. He didn't have the greatest year for the Roosters. Um, he did play some really good football at the back end when they made that run into the finals. But for... The entire season, he was below his best. Um, and Reese Walsh was the form player of the competition for a fair chunk of, of the year and carved up in origin. And, and Caelan Pong got the Dalian medal. So, of course, they're absolutely 100% real. They are picking on reputation and reputation alone. Real, real. Even Mal agrees with it. He said yeah. it himself. Yeah. So oh, We can all agree. No need to take notes, Mal. <laughs> uh, right, that's it. NRL season. Yeah. 2023. Done. Bang. Can't wait. Boom. 
Hope you enjoyed it. We'll, uh, we'll speak to you very soon.